Hi, friends. Going through my bronzer collection, presenting my standout favorites and those that I felt played a huge role in my makeup collecting revolution. Because some products have this standout vibe about them where I remember a time when starting YouTube, buying lots of makeup, too much makeup, and just remembering that moment when I received the product, tried the product, used it on camera. So these have great significance. And and for bronzer, it's one of those strange things and maybe it's because I encountered the concept of bronzer for the first time in Kevin Aquan's Making Faces, yes, Makeup Bible, where he was speaking about using bronzer and the, again, what is bronzer? Something that can deliver a sun-kissed look through its powder texture. How? It was appealing to me it enchanted me. I then went in high pursuit in finding this product that will provide that perfect sun-kissed glow. There'll be a lot of sun changing in this video. <laughs> How ironic. With that said, I collected a lot of bronzers over the course of several years. Thank goodness most of them are powders and they're still fine even after their suggested 12-month <laughs> shelf life. Oh well. And to briefly go down memory lane before we get into the collection, I just wanted to share a few products I applied on today that I haven't used in a while. For foundation, I used the Kogendo Moisture Foundation. It's the, yes, Moisture Foundation in 143. It's like my exact skin tone. Anything lighter would have looked a little funny, so 143 works for now in winter, maybe not so much when I get a little tan. Natasha Denona's Camel Palette. Adore. I need to use this more often. And on the highlighter, remember this, because I totally forgot, the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter. This is in the shade Lit. It's like a, a pinky champagne. I applied it here on the cheekbones. Beautifully shiny. Listen, it was because I was going through my drawers and everything to find these bronzers and I bumped into the Flex highlighter and was like, whoa, hey. Hey. On the lips, I have Dior's Desante, uh, Rouge Dior 449, a light beige color. Really, you know, this, I should be, it should be in the forefront. And for liner, I used Wayne's Deep Nude Pencil. I think it would have looked better if I had one that was more like a bark brown, but this works. It gives me right framing so that Desante doesn't just wash me out entirely. We're gonna get into the bronzers now. It's a free for all, so these don't come in a specific order. These are not ranked per se and in not specific categories. If I was really nerdy, I would put these all by the date they were released, but that would have been too much. Let me start off with Fenty Beauty. I think they released cream bronzers first. So I bought three at the time in the shades Honey Glaze, Macchiato, and Teddy. I don't use this as much as I maybe should. Perhaps it's the season. I typically gravitate towards powder formulas for winter. I don't know why. Perhaps I prefer that more matte finish, which is what a powder will uh, provide. But the cream bronzer from Fenty Beauty, I thought was pretty solid. Emollient, nice blendability, tons of different shades. I think they released a deeper one at some point, I don't know if it was in their cream formula or their powder formula, which we'll get to in a minute. Did I need three shades? Absolutely not. But you know, one of those things where I just needed to find out like, what's the difference between three, four, and five? This is in the shade Teddy. Macchiato is the lightest out of the ones I bought. I think Macchiato has more of like a neutral feel to it. Yeah, so that's definitely didn't need to get Macchiato because it would have made a difference now since I'm lighter now in the winter, but not in the summertime. Honey Glaze was definitely the warmest out of the three, right? That is more orange leaning. So if I were to pick, if I were to go back in time and tell Alicia just by one, I think it would have been Teddy for me because that's the most neutral 
and one I could adjust the shade a little more if I wanted to by applying another powder bronzer shade. Then they released their powder bronzers. I actually think do I have another one? No, I feel I only bought two of the Sunstalkers, Island Ting and Beijing Gyal. I don't remember if I was supposed to say Gyal or Gyal, whatever. I'm just not gonna start. I'm gonna stop saying it. Beijing G is kind of like Teddy Honey Glaze. What was that shade? Thing Honey Glaze. Leaning a little more warm, where Island Ting is more like, I think a little bit neutral. In terms of the consistency, Again, Fenty products are solid. I think they're above average. There's nothing so like profoundly great about them. And I, I know if you love Fenty, my, my apologies. It's just they, they, they work fine, right? I think all these shades look great on my skin tone. I could grab them at any time and be okay with the result. Perhaps I'll go back into using their cream bronzer because I actually like a cream bronzer. I think it looks more skin-like and finish. It being a cream product versus a powder one, despite how well-formulated powder products are now in the market, depending on your skin type condition, if it's drier, it could look a little a textured on the skin uneven and not skin like right but for the most part i'm normal normal to oily maybe during the summertime so i'm fine with powders and the fenty products are solid you know what i mean but we're going a blast in the past remember these the anastasia beverly hills powder bronzers they recently released their uh, cream bronzers, I think. It was a bronzer product, right? Not a contour one. I really like these bronzers. These, I don't know. The appeal to Anastasia Beverly Hills, I think, with, you know, during the height of the beauty influencer era, they were in the forefront, and when they released these bronzers, my goodness, what? I was excited. I have three shades. Saddle, Cappuccino, and Rich Amber. Of course, all very uh nuanced in undertone so this is saddle which i like because it's more neutral in undertone rich amber has a little more red in there and cappuccino i think like more brown now keep in mind these are old they're old so the pigmentation might not be as robust just keep that in mind but the formula is silky i really like this bronzer and i actually applied a little bit here on the higher points of my hollows i applied rich amber to provide a little more toastiness to the other bronzer that i'll mention when we get to it <laughs> surprise but i kept these because i thought these were fantastic you i mean look how much product you get my goodness and the tones of bronzer i felt were were great they were you know not too orangey, which people tend to avoid, especially if you were lighter than me. If you're medium tone like me, I feel like we could get away with a lot of skin tones. And if you're deeper than me, that's when we ran into issues where sometimes there was not a shade to address that part of the spectrum at all. But I think we're doing a lot better depending on the brand. I'm not sure how deep the Anastasia powder bronzers went, but again, if I went back in time, I would have just probably purchased let me see, probably just purchased cappuccino. I thought cappuccino was like a nice in between rich amber and saddle. Saddle for me, the appeal was this more neutral brown undertone because people tend to rely on bronzers for sculpting reasons as well. And you know, for bronzer, for me, you just apply in a more enveloped, bigger fashion where again, it's looking to emulate that sun-kissed look on the skin, whereas contour is more precise in this sculpting requirement, right? So I went with saddle because I'm like, ooh, maybe I could contour with it. Well, that was silly, why would I do that? I forgot when these released, but these are the MAC bronzers. I kept the boxes because I believe this was a limited collection, both in, let's see here, beige and beauty, and totally topless. I really like these shades. There was something about these bronzers where not only the consistency, I mean, super silky to the touch, but I thought the undertones were unique. So that's totally topless. And here we have beige and beauty, which is a little lighter and probably like my skin tone, but one that I could use for like that first layer bronzer just to get let's say for instance, with a foundation like the 
Kogan Do. I needed a little more warmth, but I didn't want to mix in another foundation, so I would rely on a shade like this to just get in a little... <laughs> A little bit more tan and then maybe go in with the shade like totally topless to provide more of that robust sun-kissed look which is something I like to do I like to layer my bronzers which might explain why I love to buy so many shades from the same brand but whatever and I adore the compact I thought the compact design was gorgeous kept it happy that I bought these and again these powders are beautifully silky and almost look radiant on the skin. Not that they have any shine, but they don't look flat. And again, more of that soft focus finish when you blend it in. Beautiful. Happy I have these. Mented Cosmetics Bronzer. These are made in Italy. I'm not going to mention where all these bronzers are at, but you know, it's just... You can't miss it. I just had to say it. Beach Bum and Vacay. I believe it was Beach Bum that I likened to Benefit Hula. That's coming up soon. Hula Caramel to be more specific because this yellow toned bronzer gig I could get down with. I don't know what it is. I think it depends on your undertone where, you know, why you would choose one that's yellowish leaning and i say yellowish because if you look at the more orange toned ones here it's not exactly like that orange undertone it has that yellow in it which i really like and then i also picked up vacay that has a little more red in the undertone right so that's next to beach bum and i like red tone bronzers as that shade provides a little more toastiness to the complexion. So it's a different vibe than something that's yellow tone. And thinking about it now, perhaps my complexion, I don't know if it would benefit more from a yellow tone bronzer, undertone bronzer, rather than a red toned one or even more neutral brown, because I consider myself to be golden olive in the undertone. So I thought maybe with a little bit of that green that's in my undertone, that yellow would work out, but I don't know if that's accurate color science. I could be off, you can let me know down below. Another blast from the past, the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Ipanema Sun. This for me was a go-to immediately. I just adore the texture of this bronzer and the tone of it as well. It's beautifully soft, silky, has the right amount of warmth without being too orange, like here from some of the uh, Fenty bronzers. Like we've experienced with Becca highlighters, you know, when they're at their hike, their peak, no longer available on the makeup stands. The bronzer consistency was beautiful, silky on the skin, and although a powder, it had a little bit, I think, of like that Becca Pearl formula going on in their highlighter, so when you applied it, there was a little bit of sheen on the skin that wasn't sparkly or overly shimmery or metallic, but allowed the skin to truly have that glow from within finish when you applied it on your cheeks. And why don't I use the opportunity now to go right into the hula. I will have to say, with all my critique about the benefit boxes, they did manage to widen them out. So the new blush boxes are not as thick, all right? But still, get rid of the box. Hula Caramel was an interesting shade. It was uh, the release when, because they only had one bronzer shade, hula, that was it. Very neutral in undertone. People love that bronzer for sculpting purposes, but then they released more shades. I think it was Hula Toasted that was the deeper shade. And this is Hula Caramel. And like Vacay, it reminded me of Vacay a little bit because of that yellow undertone, but I thought that was unique when I applied it for the first time. I'm like, oh, I like this. This is nice. It was a different vibe. For sure. I have to apply it now and see where I am with it. But next to it, I do have Starla. And although Starla is not a bronzer, it's a blush. It's still described to be a rosy bronze. So that's why I have it in here. I was, oh, I just opened it and it totally crushed. It was new and it broke. Wow. Wow. I have to say, this is where a box packaging has the advantage 
Now I'm gonna treat this as like the Guerlain pearls or whatever they're called. Anyway, back to the video. This is Starla. And again, as you can see, it's not a bronze shade in its entirety, but the rosiness I feel makes it one and done for me for sculpting purposes, like how I feel about Pat McGrath's Divine Blush in, it, I was gonna say Terracotta, but that's not the name, Paradise Venus, how dare I? Touching on a little bit of Lux, this is the Gucci bronzer, uh, a Eclat Soleil. In number two, I think number two is my, is it number three or four? I forgot which one it was, probably number, th no, let me see, let me swatch it first before I start yapping. Yeah, it's number two. Number two is my favorite because it's more neutral and it has that like ruddiness about it. It's toasty but not red undertone. It has like a burnt look to it. Does that make any sense? Or let me say this, this has more of like a burnt look to it because of the red. This is more toasty because it's more rich brown, but it's not like dull brown. That's why I adore this shade over the other two that I have. If you want to see more swatches in comparing them and also me applying them on my face, I got a Gucci video. Make sure to link that up above and down below if you want to take a look. Beautifully silky, but the Gucci bronzer does have a little bit of like... It's hard to see. Maybe it was another brush that I used, but I thought I saw like very light gold specks, which you can kind of see when you turn it to face the sun. It doesn't appear on your skin, however, so you don't see gold glitter on your cheeks, but I think it's there to provide a little more reflectivity. The powder itself though, I don't know if you can see on camera, it's beautifully silky. Just look how smooth that goes on the skin. So I, that's that's a high favorite. Lux, it has fragrance. Thank goodness it's not terribly overpowering, but it's still there. Have to mention it. The Sicily Fido Touche Illusion Powder Gel Bronzer. One shade, one shade. So if you're deeper than me, this would probably be a highlighter for you. The compact, or I should say the pan is gorgeous. It's like an embossed ray design. Unfortunately though, limited to the skin tones this can serve. For me, this will be like a, a more sheen type of a gig. I actually apply this over my first bronzer to get a little more dimension on the cheeks. And I do like how it's a little shiny because it's baked. And if you're deeper than me, you could probably apply this as a highlighter, but it not appear typically highlight in nature. It will still have that sheen and glow on your cheekbones, but this formula, this big formula is outrageous. I bought this on sale because I refuse to buy it full price. I keep seeing it among luxury favorite slits lists. So I thought, why not? It's on sale, let me just get it. Switching gears here temporarily, wanted to share some cream bronzers. This is the Rare Beauty, the official name I think it's like, there's another positive affirmation name, but also made in Italy. Mm. Always sunny, definitely more warm, right? So this is the more warm leaning shades that I have in my cream bronzer selection. What I like about the Rare Beauty Stick, and I have a video on this as well, is it has nice slip which makes it very easy to blend. It almost has a little bit of a silicone feel to it, which might be favorable to some, maybe not to others. With that said, I think it advantageous to have that texture because it just makes it so easy to blend into your skin. You don't even need a tool. You could use your fingers and the stick design encourages that fast application on the go vibe where you don't want to get too involved with your makeup application. You just want to paint on your face, draw on your face, if you will. And again, this slip light consistency, it makes it very easy to just blend out with your fingers. And the blend is virtually undetectable. Like you could just see how it sinks in and it doesn't look artificial like a powder would, depending on, you know, your, again, skin type and your, the brush that you use and all those variables to consider. But I really like the Rare Beauty. I uh, appreciate its easy packing abilities. It's small, it doesn't take up much space, and if I need a little bit of bronzing, 
I use the Always Sunny. And let's stay for the cream bronzers briefly. Why not to finish it off? The Say Medium Bronze Sun Melt. Very different experience from the Rare Beauty. A lot more emollient and shiny. And if you want it more of like a glass skin effect, on your bronzer than maybe the sun melt. The main critique people had with this was the fact that they thought it was too oily or just too emollient. This is the type of bronzer, you know, one that wants like that dewy finish on their skin. And this is what the sun melt will do. You could also try applying powder first and the sun melt afterwards for reinforcement or what I have done is apply the sun melt first and then a powder bronzer on top. So the dewy finish of the sun melt carries over to when you apply a powder on top where the powder application wouldn't look as dry. If you're still trying to achieve a little bit of like that radiance on your skin, but trying to offset the shine, then I would try that combination. I do like, however, the sun melt. I think it's an easy, application in terms of the consistency and it's nice also i felt in the summer when i wouldn't apply foundation because it was just way too hot too much on my face hey sun change again all throughout the video just to use this all over as like a means to address uneven skin tone maybe a little coverage here through the hollows I thought was a nice step to take with the say so that's why I consider it a favorite and I use it you know on off season but maybe I'll use it tomorrow you know change things up this bronzer was one of my most favorite from NARS I forgot the official name but the pan looked like this this is in the shade Falaces Falace. I love this color I don't know what it is it was like a pinky like rosy bronze look at that Ooh, this shade was one of my most favorite shades of life and i think this bronzer didn't do well because it's baked hard to pick up but now with the tools we got okay for example sonia's niji pro this brush will be savage <laughs> with this bronzer it will pick up all the powder okay like it's gonna pick it up ain't gonna leave nothing behind so i understand that this might have been a frustrating formula to work with if you were using a super soft fluffy brush but now please i'm gonna have this this is gonna be also I have like a collection of makeup that I've been acquiring over the last week when I've been digging around my drawers and I get so excited now. I'm like, I haven't used that in a while. I haven't used that in a while. It's one of my favorites. I think I have another shade actually uh, in this bronzer. It might have been Casino. I'm not entirely sure. But this one here, it's like toasty and burnt at the same time. It has a little bit of red and a little bit of that toastiness. It's almost like a ruddiness about it. Let me take a moment and show an iconic bronzer, the Marc Jacobs. Look at all these. Really, is this necessary, Alicia? It is certainly not. I applied the first shade ever released in the line, which again, a, the problem with the, a lot of these luxury bronzers is that they only came in one shade. Hello, what about the rest? <laughs> Can they partake too? I guess not. This is the original, I believe, the 102 Tantric in the Omega Bronze. I apply that on my face today with Sonia's Jumbo Bronzer. What an appropriate matchup, don't you think? This is a great shade, I know, very limited. So I'm, I'm selfish when I say this. I thought this was great as the first step for me just again to bring in warmth into the complexion because the Kogan Do foundation was a little light by itself. I think the next one, hmm, because there were two releases. There was the Coconut Bronze, the Coconut Perfect Tan, 106 Tantalize. This had a little bit more, I think a little more red in undertone. Yeah, so this is the Tantric. Is that the Tantric? Yes, that's the 102. That is the Tantalize. And then Marc Jacobs released a deeper shade, but I thought maybe still not deep enough. Tantastic, 
104. No, I lied. This was the one that was supposed to be for deeper skin tones, but still, we, we could have used a little more than that. However, if you layered it, you might have gotten something. Don't know how much, however. This one was heavily sought after, <laughs> gray, because it was more neutral than tantric, right? So people use this for their sculpting purposes. If you were lighter than me, then this was the bronzer that everyone just, this was the new hula, I felt like. I forgot which one came first, but people categorized it within the same expectations that although marketed as a bronzer, they were using it for sculpting needs because they were trying to not go with that orange tan look on their face. So that's why Tantastic was a fast favorite. But I actually really love the original just for that first bronzer step for me to get me a little more color. And then I went in with Rich Amber, the Anastasia bronzer, just on the higher points. And I thought that gave me really nice toastiness. Tom for do, 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 do. Let me grab the huge compacts that I have. I have two. We have the Tom Ford Soleil. Uh, yes, it's still in the box. Uh, Tara, I believe these came in like big and small compacts. Tara was the more neutral shade, I believe. And the actual formulas came in a variety of like powder. I mean, you could barely see that. Okay, I have to put it right up to the lens. This pretty much did nothing for me. I don't know why I bought this. I'm an idiot. Bronze Age, I actually, I think I bought on Macari because Bronze Age was discontinued, came in the larger compact and was a baked formula. So this was one of the, uh, harder to pick up, but I adore this more than Tara. This gave me at least a little something. You know what I mean? And with Najee Pro, forget it. This brush will pick up Bronze Age like butter, and it will actually look like something on my skin. The other shade that I have is Gold Dust. I believe this is actual an actual powder compared to Bronze Age. Gold Dust has a little... Yeah, it's kind of like the Gucci bronzer where you got little gold specks in there, not doing a lot. So from this experiment, we can conclude that Bronze Age was the best matchup for me for what I could use it for and it actually doing something for my skin. All these other bronzers, however, maybe I could use Gold Dust as a first stepper like I did with... Uh, tantric but i will have to experiment maybe use it with the niji pro the urban decay beached bronzer i have this in bronze more mid-tier yeah and i actually really like this color i thought it was you know doing something gave me a little it's, it's old for sure you know what i mean but i like the color because it leaned more neutral on my skin tone and gave me the opportunity to sculpt if I wanted, but still achieve that sun-kissed glow. And the powder itself, very silky, easy to blend, even still after all this time, it still delivers a little bit of something. Charlotte Tilbury with her airbrush bronzer. She recently released some cream bronzers in huge pans as well, and I just could not. <laughs> I understand the, the whole point was the product is to be used on face and body, but no, I bought two, medium and tan. Medium definitely was giving a little more neutral in feel, a one-stepper perhaps in like the tantric category of things, and tan, a lot more warmth, right? So this was going to lean a little more red-ish, not totally, it's a beautiful color, a huge jump as you see. So I have to go in very lightly with tan, especially now where my uh, complexion shade is at. Could go hand with medium. For instance, I would use a, a much denser brush, maybe the jumbo bronzer with medium and a fluffy, uffy something. Like let's see here, maybe the designer pro or something fluffier, soft cheek with tan, like right here, and then buff the rest down, 
maybe it envelops a little bit of my cheeks to kind of bring the color to the center of my face but that that will be it I will have to stop there. Beautifully silky, huge compact, little pain to like use and take along for the ride if you wanted to travel with it, but all in all a solid bronzer. I still think limited in skin tones, only four shades released. I believe we could have used like two more, but maybe we'll see them this year, I don't know. Old school makeup forever, the Pro Fusion Bronze. I believe this was 35M. Anything that's baked just has a beautiful set and finish to the skin. It just appears undetectable, sinks in like milky, silky fabric on your face. And without a doubt, the Makeup Forever, I feel is still a standout pick for me in terms of the, the color, the formula. I do think in all, they had five. I don't even know if these are existing anymore, but listen, one of my picks, and still a heavy recommendation, I feel, for anyone looking for bronzer who feels intimidated by it, and every time they apply it, it looks muddy on the skin, because that is an issue I feel I personally ran into several times. Maybe it was the brushes that I was using where it just didn't look seamless. It just looked like a blob of brown on my skin. It didn't have that that flow of gradients on the cheek. But, but Makeup Forever, I mean, my gosh, this is just so smooth and it looks beautiful when blended. LYS, the higher standard, not only powder bronzer, but their cream. I have in three shades. This is Harmony. I also, I think I have a video showing all three as well, but Harmony is my favorite out of the three because it gives me the right amount of sun-kissedness, it's not too neutral, although I would consider this to be more of the neutral leaning shades out of all the shades that I previously showed. Compared to the stick, the stick is, my gosh, speak about buttery, my goodness. So this is gonna give a little more and it definitely has more of a robust serving of color for me, even though it's the same shade. You can see clearly, even when this is blended, will serve a little more. So I could go in with Harmony on top if I wanted to set it. Probably wouldn't have to because this actually has a, a nice finish, although emollient doesn't stay slick on the skin. You know what I mean? But the LYS bronzer, when it first released and when I first tried it, I was impressed by the formulation the bronzer range you know definitely had more shades to 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 use for a wider range of of complexion needs and the fact that it was just easy to apply and even though it's matte it didn't look dull on the skin there was still a little bit of like yes matte but not just Ugh. I don't want to say radiance because there's no shimmer or sparkles in here, but it, but it gave more than a typically formulated matte powder bronzer does. And that's why I still consider it a favorite. The Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. I have this in dark and medium dark. Decided to show medium dark. Definitely more of like that reddish tone, but very silky on the skin. You can see just through the swatch. It's almost like a veil of color when you apply it. And in addition to the bronzer, I do really like Makeup by Mario's highlighters. I do like the bronzer more than the contour sticks and the blush sticks as well. I thought those were a little too dry. And for me, you kind of had to take the product off the stick first. To go head on from stick to cheek was a bad idea. But the bronzers though, then you had a little more room for error, silky on the blend, and you can layer them well. You can build up the color successfully without it looking muddy. And as I mentioned, sometimes you run into when you're trying to build color, but with this formula, you're able to do so without the risk of it looking heavy on the cheeks. Hourglass. The thing with Hourglass, you know, we see the potential. We see the potential for deeper skin tones to be addressed in concealers and foundations. The undertones though are just all over the place and really hard to pinpoint, especially if you can't get a sample and you're trying to figure it out online. <laughs> Good luck. Bronzers though, perhaps it's because of the technology that they rely on, 
the Marble Eyes thing where they mixed one of their ambient powders with bronzer. And there is like a deeper bronze shade, very limited. Something I think a deeper complexion would use maybe as highlight, but not to actually bronze. This is a nude bronze light, more neutral. So that's gonna give a little more sculpt and a brush I would use this with would be more densely packed, like the rougher number four or even the 37, right? If I needed to get color on there, okay? We see bronzers one shade in their lighting edit palette. So if we could just get some like that, like don't worry about marbleizing, it's beautiful. Yeah, we like it, but deepen the bronzer shade without having to mix in the ambient powder so that we could actually get something with enough depth. The other shade that I have is Radiant Bronze Light. So this has more of the golden hue to it, right? But again, even on me, this is gonna serve as like soft focus, pearl finish, radiant in the blend. I like that, I like that. I can see what role the hourglass plays in my bronzing needs. Again, something I just have to keep in my line of vision because I'll forget that I have it. You know what I mean? Between these two, this is gonna give me more of a sun-kissed vibe, whereas nude bronze light, more sculpting. Are we almost done? I think we are. A few, a few ones to wrap it up. We have the Chantecaille Real Blondes in Serena. I do not know for the life of me where's Goa. Goa is like the burnt bronzer shade. Sirena is more golden, and this will be, I think, more of like an, an all-over shade for me to provide a little bit of that enveloped sun-kissed vibe to the skin, and also it's more golden in undertone where Goa is more red, so that's going to give me more of that, that burnt look, which I like. I like that something about getting tan that we don't usually don't wanna go through. We don't wanna put our skin through that, okay? But if we can emulate that with makeup, however, and if the bronzer itself is red undertone and it can provide that burnt feel without the burning, yes. A drugstore select, hmm? Milani, oh my gosh. The Suntan Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. This is in number three. Definitely more neutral for me. But the powder itself is really nice, you know, for drugstore. Uh, but I would say Milani is a little expensive for drugstore. They're like in the 10 and up range. I think this might have been not $15, but between 12 and 15, if I can recall. Maybe I'm wrong. I do like the shade. One and done, a little sculpt, a little bronze. This definitely serves on my skin tone more of a sculpting moment for me. I don't think it has. The, you know, the warming capabilities of some that we've seen here earlier, but I wanted to include it because I thought this was solid for it being drugstore and the formula. Listen, is this, where is this made at? <gasps> it's made in Italy. Look at that. Still wanted to include it because I remember at the time when I first used this, I was like, wow, this is nice. And lastly, we have the Natasha Denona Tan Bronze and Glow Palette. Yes, it's a palette, not an exclusive bronzer. However, this shade right here, this is one of my most favorite bronzer shades out of all the shades that I have. Toasty, burnt, sun-kissed in all. The softness of the powder, It look at that sheen. Although it's matte, it doesn't look dull on the skin. Again, I just love how it looks, not only as bronzer, but like it's a Starla moment. I could bring it lower to serve a little bit of blush knees if I wanted, didn't have to, can keep it higher, but it's such a beautiful color and it changes my complexion for the better, especially if I wanted that dimension, but didn't want to go in with an exclusive blush that I just wanted to keep it more neutral, but it's not completely neutral because it still had just like that toastiness to the undertone. Ooh! And the entire palette is a pleasure to use. Throw on the bronzer, tap on the cream highlighter, throw on a little bit of the super glow, and then the extreme glow, what is it called officially? The glow impact powder. 
right on the tops of the cheekbones my goodness you you can't get better than that maybe put on the camel palette afterwards mm. so those are all my major bronzer picks that i wanted to show and perhaps subconsciously i wanted to do this video now in case another bronzer decides to come along a new one mm. i get major fomo when it comes to bronzer highlighter like I did with my Charlotte Tilbury highlighter collection video, I'm able to like chill because I don't love highlighter the same way I love bronzer. That's just it. And despite me not showing all the bronzers that I have, I might have some that I missed. These are uh, big players in my bronzing collection. Despite that, I would still buy another and that's a problem. So I'm trying to buckle down and it does help to swatch everything to see what, how the products are looking still, if they're good or not. Again, I'm not recommending that you use super old makeup, especially if it's clearly disintegrating and smelling weird and has mold. Like, don't put that on your face. I keep my makeup in a cool, dry place. I don't keep it in my bathroom. So it's preserved pretty well, especially because some of my drawers are near the outside wall, which is right outside. So it's almost like a cool corner for me for my makeup or in general, this room gets pretty cool when the heat's not on and it's not on often. So I think that has saved the longevity of products that I had for over the course of several years and they still look beautiful. I love all the shades that I swatched and loved how they felt in the swatch and would be using them again. So looking forward to that. I guess I have to do the blush edition now, don't I? That will come soon. I don't know when, we'll see. But I'm happy I did the bronzers. Hopefully this helped for you. Also, maybe you don't have any of these and you just needed an opportunity to see them in action to decide if you needed to buy or not. I'll see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, cheek collection video, or another brush video. Take care and I'll see you again soon.